Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Holy Moly, episode 20, episode 20 of Sunday Tea Book. Five months. Five months of uh -huh. um, action packed live uh, tea translation, tea culture, tea information. Super fun. Hey Cindy on Instagram, how are you doing over there? Hello. And hello, folks on YouTube. We're doing a little Instagram YouTube thing as we get started. We will eventually be switching over to YouTube fully, but we are here. Really exciting mm -hmm. section that we've been in. We started dark tea last week. We're carrying on with Shampuar today. So uh, um, I guess on that note, I can show them what we're brewing. Yes. So I think we said we were going to brew 2015 <laughs> Shampuar, but I uh, got mixed up and I prepared 2016. So if you're brewing along with us and you're enjoying the 2015, Hello. know that you have a delightful tea as well. Um, yeah. Hey Johnny, hey Johnny Loy on YouTube. I'm so glad you caught us today. Welcome back. And hey, uh, we're doing great JS. Welcome to the YouTube stream. So yeah, um, this, what you're looking at on the screen for the YouTube folks is the Shempuar. You can check it out on our webpage. I think the link down below goes to 2015, but it's the same thing. You can check out the pictures. Mm -hmm. You can see the description. It's the same thing. <laughs> if you click down below, you can get all the detailed tasting notes. You can see where the tea comes from. You can see uh, how to brew it. And also, you can leave us a review. You see this one? It's got such a lonely, lonely no review. So maybe go on over if you've tried this tea and leave us a review, all right? So, um, yeah, that's what we're, we're brewing 2016 Shampuar. Mm -hmm. If you're brewing, let us know what you're brewing, whatever it is. Yes. Oh, Cindy bounced over to YouTube. Hey, welcome to the YouTube side. Hey, one Y Ro, hey, Oney Ross, Oney Ross 87 on Instagram. Welcome, Kelsey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You like it's actually blue. You like my nail polish. That's awesome. So, that's YouTube. I'm going to show YouTube my nails. So it's actually dark blue. It's really hard. It does look pretty black. And of course, midnight dive. I okay. got the middle. Midnight dive. <laughs> so Kelsey, I'm stoked that you're watching us live. I'm stoked that we're here on episode 20, mm. brewing up 2016 Shampuar. Let us know what you're brewing. Yes. Oh, I talked about. We're having a little. Uh, not quite a snow yet, but it was a freezing rain. Oh, I worse think, than this snow. Morning. Snow really... is pretty. It can be quite lovely the way it sits on the trees. Freezing rain. Man, we got some freezing rain out there. I got to go out later, so uh, I'm going to need some I'm tea. I'm kind of excited. Really, yeah. Weirdly, because I just had a nap. It's I so, think that's why I'm so no, no, excited about going out. It's really fun to experience winter with her. Every winter when the ice <laughs> first comes. I still get excited. Yeah, and she like, if there's a slippery patch, she goes and try to slide on it. Like it reminds me when I was like five or eight, like when <laughs> every year you're so excited. Now I'm kind of like, damn, snow, uh, <laughs> ice and cold. I want to move to that, South that's Carolina. That's my like a March, March move. Yeah. Like a, I hate how, win uh, how winter lasts for yeah. so long. Spring doesn't come. That's how but it But the way goes. it first starts, even now, like today, I'm still pretty happy. And it's a perfect day for napping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're continuing on uh, the book by my mom, Jenny Wu, called China Tea. And uh, we've uh, gone through the green tea sessions, introducing many different types of green tea. And uh, now we're in the dark tea area. Today we're, we'll be talking about Shen mm. and Shu which is a oh, very yeah. interesting topic. People seem to love it. Mm. I love it. Mm. Let us know what's in your cup and um, yeah. And for those, the oh, sorry. go ahead. No, I was gonna I'll say the finished uh, translation is uh, mm. in the link in uh, the description section. Yeah, yeah down on below YouTube. on yeah. YouTube. So if you uh, want to follow along, we strong. We started. We used to put the finished translation up after we were done, mm -hmm. mostly because we're you know <laughs> procrastinating. But then we realized this could be really helpful for you guys following along. So if you head on down to the link down below, you'll see the finished translation over on our website. You can follow along as we go through. So on that note, mm -hmm. how we're going to approach the book. So for you guys on Instagram, let me, you guys on Instagram down here. So the phone's on the screen for YouTube. So if it looked like I pointed at YouTube, you know, ignore. Instagram folks, head on over to YouTube because I'm going to pull the book right up on the screen. Can't do it on Instagram. And we're gonna we're gonna follow along through the book. Sometimes Jim will point out cool Chinese phrases. Sometimes it's just nice to see the pictures. I'm gonna highlight it up. I'm gonna mark it up, and we're gonna talk about it as we go through and translate it. I'm gonna read it. 
And um, you guys are going to pitch in when we're stuck for a word. You're going to let us know, oh, this might be a good word. That might be a good word. That's been super helpful for us. So if you're over on the Instagram side, um, one last thing before I head out, I'll give you a little overview about what this Sunday Tea Book series is. I'm kind of doing everything mm. backwards today. Is This was an idea that, again, came from you guys out in the audience who said uh, it might be fun to actually read some of these interesting documents live. So what we do on this series is we take a Chinese book, an article, or a paper, so even academic papers. Right now we're on this, our first book, China Tea by Jian Li Wu, mm -hmm. but we translate them live. Now, if the, I gotta find a better way to say that because that sounds tremendously boring. When I say it out loud, I just feel like, oh, that must be what, watching some guy read on YouTube, like what's next, right? But actually, over the last five years, working with Jen and learning about Chinese tea and having that interaction about, well, why is it called this and why is it called that? And sometimes she get frustrated and, oh, you don't understand. And it's true, I don't understand. And then we finally figure out what's going on. There's a lot of learning kind of between the lines. So if we just mm. translated it and fixed it and published it, that would be good. But doing this is absolutely fantastic. Great, super awesome. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Um, I haven't even had tea well i had my morning tea but i haven't had tea yet so i am i'm just super jazzed about this whole program about this tea we're having today mm -hmm. so instagram bye bye i'm gonna grab your i'm gonna pick you up whoa whoa <laughs> whoa shaky instagram i'm gonna say bye sorry to shake you up over there gambare uh svn kinsai teacha chai hopefully we'll see you on youtube okay we are gonna say goodbye for now though all right and Tea Lover Blog, we're just heading over to YouTube, okay? This is Sunday Tea Book. You got to jump onto YouTube, okay? Um, I just explained it, so sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to talk over you because for those people who, they hear both ends. So I just uh, look at you being overly excited for this. I'm just thinking of switching to the tea table as I'm going to brew today with a, a teapot. Not like there's any fancy setup. We just have a new camera, so I kind of want to use that. Oh, oh yes, we're definitely going to do that. Mm -hmm. This is super cool, guys. We got a, a, a reliable tea camera now. So it also highlights my nails pretty good. So um, hopefully... Ma ew, ew, sorry. Matching nails. Yeah, so she matched up. So a, a, couple, ago, a couple of days ago, somebody this noticed my nails. But, mm -hmm. but we weren't fully coordinated yet. Now we're fully coordinated. Yes. So I got about 7.2 grams of this 2016, mm -hmm. 2016 Shampuar going mm -hmm. into the teapot. You want to have a yeah, smell? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks. So JS is uh, having some Xiao Tuo Cha, but I got to say, I absolutely love the rogue way that I got from you. Thank oh, you. Thanks, man. That's super yeah. cool. Oh, I love the little Tuo Cha because it's so convenient. I used to go mm. everywhere with it when I was, uh, especially when I used to uh, go to schools and classes. I found it's very cool. And uh, my colleagues used to be very like, never see a loose leaf in the travel mug because i used to have a glass one they were like whoa mm. what are those floating in <laughs> right oh and, the, and you're talking about school here in ottawa yeah yeah because of course in china they'd be used to the leaf floating mm -hmm. around yeah so um i also find those little torcha really handy when i go camping or canoeing yeah um they put put a few in a ziploc baggie or two because canoe camping can be wet and you don't want your tea wet until mm. it's the right time right. super small and convenient then when you get to your campsite you boil up some water maybe even boil the tea doesn't matter oh that looks nice that yeah looks the color nice. looks really good so like, cindy's drinking i don't know if you mentioned so yeah js is having the uh xiao tuo cha. right and uh, Cindy's having a 2013 Tianjin. So that's, uh, she says she's a week behind, but it's, <laughs> that's also fine. You can be a week behind, you can be a month behind, you could even be in the future. You know, if you're brewing a new long, let us know. Right. This mm. thing is really. Uh... I love Tianjin too. We had, so JS said that he loves uh, so tasty Tianjin. Mm. Remember, we had that for our, we, we just did a, if you missed the uh, live we did recently about. Gua Sha. Gua Sha, we right. had Tianjin and we had a YouTube outage, so we had to, ha we had uh, to uh, have it twice. twice. We, we loved it so much on Wednesday, we did it again on Thursday, we didn't change the tea. Yeah, but that got me thinking if I wish we should have that, because as soon as I have that tea, somehow I become really like just a mellow. mellow and quiet. Right, the opposite I... of me right now. And even me, I got it mellowed me out. So <laughs> I, would, I don't know, maybe you guys would like that if I was a bit more calm down. Mm. All right, so um, that's what we're drinking. I'm waiting for some tea and I'm going to get started. I'm going to mm. get started, guys. We're going to rock and roll. We're going to dive into um, mm -hmm. 
We're going to dive into China tea right now. Let me just get the book ready, make sure it's on the right page and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And we have a, the, a presentation, a monthly presentation, and then this month we're going to talk about the Yixing teapot. So if you like these kind mm. of things, she's sure going to talk us. about Yixing teapot. I'm going to be the supporting cast for that one, but I will be there. So here we are, we're, we're uh, on episode 20 of China Tea. Of course, the book is actually organized into chapters, cool. not episodes. So to show you where we are chapter wise, um, we're in the dark tea section right here and in, in major part two here. And we're down here in the dark tea section. Last week, we kind of did a introduction to dark tea, which was those pages. And today we're going to be covering fermented and unfermented Puar tea cake which you will knowingly, which lovingly know as Shu and Shem Huar. All right, so let's, I'm gonna, so here is the dark tea intro that we did last week. I didn't clip it out this time. I'm just gonna scroll <clears throat> by it. Here, yeah. And here we are. And we have a doctor Q&A today, so that's cool. Yeah, doctor T q and A. I'm, uh, I ran out of time, guys. I have to make a confession. I really wanted to have a special graphic for Dr. TQ and I, <laughs> I just want to do something funky for that with a little music and some graphics, but uh, we will have that. We will have that. We have all the accurate tea knowledge. We have, uh, we have the authentic tasting grade Chinese tea. We have all the accurate tea knowledge. So I just love to throw in those little um, seasoning. <laughs> not... We said we would do a little um, doctor hat plus the wrong glasses. Mm. The other video, like a couple of weeks ago. Okay, okay. I got a lot of promises in the queue. I got to start delivering. <laughs> All right, guys, let's rock and roll. I'm going to mm. read this section and then we are going to unpack it. All right. Unfermented Puar tea cake. Brewing difficult. Brewing difficulty. Easy to learn. Difficulty. Four star. Best tea tasting season. Summer. More and more books about Puar and Old Tea Horse Road have been published. Puar, its profound historical intention and culture, charm, increasingly attracted worldwide attention. I'm going to do one more because that's a mm -hmm. bit short. Mm -hmm. Old Tea Horse Road, Human Culture Puar. After being pressed a long time, tea had experienced slowly fermentation. The longer time is, no, the longer that time is, the mellower the fragrance is on that long old road ups and downs on the back of the horse, weather beaten, insulation under the blazing sun, fumigated by the dust and the smell of mules and horses. These all form the last procedure. Just of it, such a long voyage to take delivery, Puar tea had secretly brewed its old heavy charm. All right, let's unpack this. How is the translation? The, the first part is really decent. And the second part is really, it's so poetic that it's... Is it hard? Like I... We get the gist, but it's okay. really, really rough. It's sort of like instructions in a, in a foreign, that you get from a foreign package that comes from China. You can hopefully understand them, but they're, right. they kind of make you giggle, right? I don't know if uh, you right. guys agree, but I'm going to just, let's go back to the first pair, because that's really, I think that's mm. pretty easy to unpack, okay? It just yes. says you know, uh, a bunch of books about Puar and the old tea horse road. And then it, then the second sentence gets a little bit chunky in its mm -hmm. translation here. But we, we get the idea, right? That tea is gaining popularity because mm. it's charming. It's historical. It, it's, it's got this sort of mystique. That's the vibe we're getting yeah, from that yeah. paragraph. Right. It's just the second paragraph. When I read it, I was like, it feels awkward. But sometimes, you oh, know, the second paragraph. Yeah, oh, sometimes I'm... I feel awkward is because I don't speak like that, but it could be perfect English. That's why I was wondering. No, no I get you. I understand what you mean. Sometimes it's just like fancy and a written yeah, yeah. in written English. Sometimes you get a, oh, I'm sorry. I put my teacup in a no. super weird spot. I like to put that down so I have more space here. Mm. That's why I put oh. that off. Yeah, it's a mini tea. Really mini. Tea bowl? Let's go to that second paragraph though, the old tea horse road. So mm. I was going to say you've probably all heard, you've, maybe you've heard of the old tea horse road, but we'll get into that in a minute. First, I just want to unpack the language here. Mm -hmm. So like I said, it's okay. Um, it's got kind of uh, like kind of got the great story. If I don't know too much about uh, 
Puar, I might be a little bit lost, but it sounds like it sounds like it's trying to express a bit of the story about how tea, especially historically, traveled out of these areas on, or traveled on the tea horse road. I think it combined the two things together: the tea and the tea horse road,、mm. and the、oh, rhythm、so、was、refreshing. more right, very refreshing、mm. and、uh, aromatic, like a, a little bit、uh, floral. More floral、mm. than I would expect. Right, right. Unless the barnyard, those animals. Yeah, the barnyard is sinking in. Is less. Yeah.、Uh, so、uh, in the Chinese version of this paragraph, it writes in a little bit uh, of a、um, uh, uh, rhetorical, like a little bit more artistic way to、yes. speak that. But I think you kind of just it says it being pressed a long time. What it actually just means? This tea is pressed,、mm-hmm. right? And it's in stays in the press form during the travel and、right. the storage. So that the long time more referring to the tea leaves stay in the press form rather than the step of pressing the tea is long. Right, and、I、that's a good clarification because、yeah. it. It 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 it's not clear what they're talking about. If you really don't know, right? Because it, it could be that oh, pressing this tea takes a long time. No, yeah, no, no. That's they're talking about it's pressed and it stays in this pressed form. It doesn't just get pressed in the factory and two days later it's on the table getting picked apart and consumed. Mm. Mm. No, in fact, it's on a horse as we go on to read a bumpy road horse、mm. ride. So、um, this is a, then in, points out to that and this. During this long time of storage transportation, it has that uh, slow uh, fermentation. That、mm-hmm. we call that fermentation, but if you want to be more、uh, technically right, it's probably oxidation, fermentation, all kinds、mm-hmm. of a、uh, complex combination complex of the two. Complex change,、mm-hmm. yeah.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, it means、uh, then it points out the longer the time is, the older the tea gets, the the. The mellower the fragrance. Yeah, this is a, my question: Is does mellower sound is right? Does that give you the implication as the、uh, the lower the fragrance or something or like? But I mean, in, in Chinese, the origin is more talking about chun, which means、mm. it's、uh, like aged wine or aged something that is more mouthfeel. Yes. Not just the、uh, that mellow doesn't. It's not like a not a fragrant mellow. Yeah, the 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 word fragrance is ill positioned here. I think because、okay. if if again if I play if I think about it and let me know what you guys think out there. Like if I'm new to tea, though, I think、mm. the smell gets lower or the smell gets more chill. Maybe it has a sharp smell, but it mellows out. Right. But it's really、right. focusing. The word focuses on smell. But I've had shampooar before, so I kind of equate fragrance here. Because again, it's a translation, a mediocre、mm-hmm. translation. I kind of go straight to the bite. I feel like it refers to the bite, and like you said,、oh. but it doesn't, you know. And maybe the mouth feel. Right. The Chinese、uh, version is more talking about the richer, the the、uh, the deeper the mouth feel,、mm-hmm. and、uh, and the lingering aroma, that aged aroma. It's not a specific.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Uh, it's not a specific flavor. Elements, yeah, or elements more, is that、mm. uh, that special taste that age gives it.、Mm-hmm. So,、um, which we've talked about before, and I think is cool.、Right. It's it's a cool thing. As with it takes some experience to be able to figure out that flavor.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, the good thing about it is when you start to pick it up, you、mm-hmm. can't you can't fake that one. Right. And then later on, it's a very、uh, romantic way, right, right. but a little bit、uh, dizzy for me to understand.、Um, Even in Chinese, huh? Not in Chinese,、oh, in oh. English. When I Sometimes it, I、right? try to、uh, see how they exp- <laughs> when I do translation. So I don't look at the English version because I could go totally just follow that if I read that first.、Mm. But if I have a section of the Chinese written that I feel like I I cannot do. Too much of literal translation. I have to organize that in a different way. I will, ref,、uh, you know, check on the translation,、right. see how they did. That's why this part I read, and I was like,、uh, no, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I should do that. Right. So、um, I think the in the set in this、uh, paragraph, what it points out is what T was experiencing. Yes.、Uh, on the road. 
and that is considered the last step. So just to, this is interesting because that kind of because you're saying these all this particular part here says these all form the last procedure. That's a little bit fuzzy because again it's not crystal clear. But what what we're saying there is this is actually the last processing step. Yes, if you. Right, so this is a really interesting thing that may not have crossed your mind to think that the actual transit of the T in these conditions form part of the process. Yes, it's not mandatory, like you don't right. have to, but because at that time this is how T get out and get consumed, right. there's no consumer getting the T fresh handed. Mm -hmm. So every T goes through that right. and this is a quite long time. So it almost like a, a whole yeah. step. So that what what includes is those you know the teeth on the back of the horse or mules or donkeys like uh, you know they're walking so the yeah, tea is getting consistent jiggled. getting shaked a little bit even though they're dried and packed as much yeah. but they're still have they're still those bouncing around bouncing around they're somewhat exposed to the weather especially yes. in terms of humidity ups and downs yes. and um, uh, you know from Yunnan too. all the way out and stuff they go through some really wet areas mm -hmm. and stuff like that at all times uh, imagine you know, we don't have a good insulations and stuff oh, yeah. it's normal when it gets a little bit wet and then yep. they dry out and on the road uh, you could have a horse fall off the river and uh, still go back and uh... so hang on that's going to lose some people right now but <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's hard to imagine how treacherous this road was but yes We've actually watched some videos of this happening. I have to show him that uh, clip. I couldn't um, believe it. So when, so every now and then, sometimes they actually have to um, zip line their horses across a gorge that has water in the gorge down below. Mm. So every now and then, tragedy strikes, and the horse falls. And when it, you know, sometimes he doesn't make it. But, some, but sometimes, but they sometimes the, little, the, the little guy falls in the water and swims to the shore, so they go retrieve him. Yeah. So you got some wet tea on your hands in those cases. Right? Right. And then you got to Is that crazy or what? Dry then and stuff. Right? I just want to, the one thing you mentioned is good is in terms of the landscape, it's very different and very like a mountain. And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of the walk, it's. It's not even like the trail walk we would have in forest. It's more like a portage walk quality of mm. the trail, but it's the whole uh, the whole time. The whole time. It's like and a it's, thousand kilometer portage if you're a canoeer. Right, and the other side could be just cliff. So it's a well, it's pretty dangerous. It's yeah. really like a dangerous. Oh, you mean like and, as you're uh, portaging, you got a, a wall here and a cliff there. Yeah, but in terms mm -hmm. of the trail, the quality of the road is not well built. It's not very uh, yeah. clear, and uh, uh, from those regions all the way to either Tibet, or Xinjiang, or Qinghai, there's tons of uh, those fierce rivers that their zip lining is not very secured. Anyway. That was off, but oh what? yeah, yeah, and and this is so we went a little bit into in depth, but it is an incredible story about how this is how tea used to be transported. Okay, it's not like Puar that tea, anymore. Yeah. Puar tea, right? Yeah, it's uh, not anymore. So old times, imagine uh, it's usually a year or something till the teas go all the way out. Mm. If they go all the way out of Tibet to uh, Indian regions or Nepal or even further. That's even longer. It takes a long time. So right. during that time, and they're on the horseback and stuff. Of course, they also absorb because tea does absorb mm -hmm. all kinds of flavor, right? Right. So that's a very long and dangerous travel. And uh, throughout that time, the tea is changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you probably put a link below that we mentioned about uh, the shu puar and shen puar and why they make mm -hmm. that is when. The new transportation uh, way, like trucks and better roads and stuff, right. it shortens that uh, time of transportation and the condition of transportation become better. So it's not a whole wet and dry wet <laughs> kind of a right, thing. Right. So for the people at destination, their tea tastes different than yeah. old times because they receive that much quicker. Yeah, so they're like, hey, what, what's wrong with the tea? And nothing's yeah. wrong with it. You're just getting it instead of a year later. You're getting it much quicker and with much less external influence. The la basically, the, what we were calling the last step or the last processing step mm. had been reduced or eliminated. 
Yes, it's a very interesting. Like Puar has a long, like a cultural. If you're into people and travel,、mm. like a, a Jeff. Jeff Fox, Fox, yeah. Fuchs, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm. You. Thinking, I think I said it right. Like I、okay. think technically that's how you say it. I think everybody mispronounces it because it makes them blush. But I okay. I don't blush easy. So, and that does not need to be censored. That's F U C H S, Jeff. I don't know how. I hope he doesn't pronounce it Fuchs. I'll be so embarrassed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways,、um, Jeff, if you see this, you can text me and correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. Now I'm blushing. See, see, that's what makes me blush. You want, see, I'm bad. So I, I, I just say something, my... then I stop and look at you. Then you have to continue. <laughs> Mm. Anyways,、uh, so he has a lot of、uh, experiences. Beautiful those... stories, beautiful、yeah. stories about the people, about the culture.、Mm. Uh, really wonderful、uh, stuff. Yeah, sharing those.、Mm. And uh, uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> yes, he has those、uh, in terms of those uh, like uh, more cultural and、uh, people. What?、Uh. I just thought of a great nickname for Jeff in the future. When next time I see him,、What? I'm gonna call him Jeff Bomb. <laughs> right? F Bomb, Jeff Bomb. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. That's so lame. <laughs> Anyways, I would just want to point out one thing, like、um, a common.、Uh, Uh, some discussion that、uh, has been going on in certain forums or among people、uh, talking about uh, uh, oh poor doesn't belong to the sixty categories and uh, uh, it's so unique uh, specifically shampoo、uh, yeah especially、mm. shampoo and stuff I totally、mm. agree that it's a very unique tea、mm. it has a long history it has everything but、um, if、uh, It's、uh, definitely belong to either of the tea category. If you look at the old time shampoo when people consume that, like this paragraph was talking about, right? right? A year there later, there was a year of、mm-hmm. you know、uh, activity, activity of the, the, aging. The tea、stuff. wasn't dormant. Let's、That's、say,、right. like it's、that、not like what a, we put in our closet. It's cool. It's dry. It's dark. Everything. That's a very typical dark tea. A part of a dark tea process, so、mm. there's no、mm. nothing wrong with categorizing that、mm. in dark tea. But yes, we sometimes drink that fresh now.、Mm-hmm. So 2016, that's pretty fresh. Right, I guess it's getting less and less. That also doesn't make that so unique. That doesn't belong. That belongs to green tea category.、Mm. Pressed green tea and sun dried green tea is a category, and this is not the only tea like that.、Mm. Uh, I just want to point it out in different. You can look at at a different angles, maybe、yes. put in different categories. But to be able to put a T to say it's a so unique、uh, that doesn't belong to the six T category, I think that was a lack of understanding about Puar and a lack of an understanding of、mm. the real definition of six T、yeah. category. I'm gonna promote one of your great videos on that note because we have two two videos on、uh, the T categories. I'll put them both down below, but、uh, if you haven't seen the first one, don't skip straight to the second one because they kind of build、mm. on one another, and that talks about those different ways to categorize tea. So I'll put that down below. I didn't think to do that originally, so I've got all kinds of Puar links down there, though. So if you want to read more about this fascinating history,、mm. dig around in the links down below, and you'll find it. It's a good article in the 2019 Charan and whatnot. All right,、mm. let's dive、okay. back into the book. All right. Okay. Next. That was a good chat.、Oh, I really miss Jeff. I haven't seen him forever. Stupid COVID. <laughs> All right, so here we go, guys. Here we go. Appreciation always before drinking. Shape of dry tea: dark green, brown green, and there are white tips in the stripes. Enjoying while tasting. The soup is bright, light yellow green. Hang on, I looked this up. Acerbity,、mm. acerbity, piquant, and it also has a strong taste of green tea and good aftertaste. All right, I'm going to unpack these two short paragraphs, and then we'll dive into the what is the old tea horse roll because that's juicy. All right, so、um, these were. Let me just check. Yeah, it seems pretty okay. Appreciation before drinking just gives the shape. Again, it's chunky, but it's fine. I wanted to go back to my the little picture I took because you can actually see what they're talking about here, right? You see that they've got the,、um, especially in a in a moment, it'll zoom in. But you can see there's the dark, 
uh, dark green and that brown green. And you can even see the little silver or whitish tips, especially as I pull in here. So I just, I thought of that um, as I shot this. So I tried to grab those white tips and highlight them. And you can even see the little uh, um, nefe there. Mm. And I have I just want to mention just yeah, the sure. clip that uh, the the T clip you show because it's uh, 2016. You have four years. It's slightly the whole cake, like not mm. a single leaf, but the whole cake. You look at it; it has a a little bit of like a reddish uh, to the reddish uh, yes. tinge. Yes, yes. And, and I, I remember when we got those; they had a more the green hue was more pronounced. Yes, right. Yes. So uh, that's something to. I wanted to come back to that too. The other thing about this section, the title is actually interesting. Because you'll see as we're going through, um, as we went through um, all the green teas, as we go through the future oolong teas, and if you remember way back when we talk about how to appraise tea, how to appreciate tea, they gave us the, uh, the steps and we're going through them all the time. And I just wanted to encourage you guys to, it's hard sometimes when you're busy, you're trying to have tea on the go. But when you have the time, do take the second before you drink to appreciate the leaf. You'll be surprised and oh, yeah, impressed how much you learn over time, even if you just have a casual look at it, don't even think too hard about it, but you'll be like, oh, this was, I thought this tea was greener a year ago or whatever. Yeah. So uh, take a minute and do that. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that. Anything about the second one? Enjoy while drinking. Oh yeah, acerbity, right? I had to look it up and I had to pause because I actually forgot how to pronounce it. So acerbity is not, right here but it is right it's sharpness or directness in speech oh. um so i think what they mean is that sharp a you know sharp raw, on a raw astringent yeah exactly exactly it could and be like a, a piquant yeah. is similar right um less less they're both leaning not directly calling out the astringent mouthfeel right. which does sometimes exist this tea on the other hand though there's no astringency i'm not getting any pucker at all mm -hmm. but it still does have that sharp bright refreshing Mm. Right, so I th that's what I felt when I felt like acerbity and piquant. Mm -hmm. uh, this one I wouldn't say is piquant, it just has brightness. Um, like, I keep thinking of a pecan. <laughs> pecans, oh, we love pecans here. Um, so, here the in Chinese, mm. they talk about cigan, which is like a more I translate it as a pungent, like a more that uh, mm. get a punch yep. feeling from yep. the tea. I think you use that word in the final translation. If any of you are following along, let me know if that's there. Mm -hmm. But um, I love that. I didn't. I forgot to mention it here, but I did. When I saw it, I didn't change it. I thought that was perfect. Mm. Pungent is a good word. All right. Yeah, and uh, also, and in mentioning that is strong taste of green tea. A lot of low grade green tea you would taste uh, almost a similar like that. Like if you go to a restaurant. Like uh, those mm -hmm. kind of a green tea, really um, a dark in color, and uh, mm. that kind of tea is really similar to uh, poor tea. Right, sharp and bold. Like when uh, yeah. at tea festivals, we often get folks come by and try the green tea, and say, "Oh, I've never had green tea taste like that before," because mm. you know it's more, it's much more mellow and delicate. And, yeah, because a lot of the experience come from Chinese China, uh, Chinese tea, tea restaurants. Chinese restaurants. Not Chinese tea restaurants. restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what is, back to the book now, let me scroll, no, let me move myself. Whoop. Ooh. There we go, sound effects by me. What is Old Tea Horse Road? Just over on the right here, guys. Mm -hmm. Old Tea Horse Road is a pure road for horses. It contains three main routes, Qingzhang, no, Qingzhang route, Dianzhang route, and Chuanzhang route. Among these three routes, Qingzhang route was the earliest one, which originated from Tang Dynasty. And the most dangerous are the famous Dianzhang route and Chuanzhang route. Mm -hmm. There are lots of branches along with the three main roads, which make Dian, Zhang, Chuan connected closely and form the most dangerous and longest old culture spread road in the mm -hmm. world. Okay. This is an awesome paragraph. People love the T-Horse Road and with, with good cause. It's so, I gotta turn my page because I actually missed this. I didn't see it till later. 
So um, I didn't have any problem with this actually. I right. think the main thing I wanted to say was it reminded me of your Tibet video that you did, which was super interesting. Mm. It's on the um, it's up there in our YouTube somewhere, right? Or do we? Is it there? It's not, not there. Sure. We're not sure. <laughs> But um, the cool thing is, is those roots which are historic that they're talking about. I learned from her. Mm -hmm. Are still the main way. Like, of course, they're not horse paths anymore. But the highways follow because there's not a, an abundance of options on how to yes. get there. It's you cannot go the straightest way. There's mountain in your way. There's something in your way. A gorge. Yeah. So these roots are actually still the foundation for the existing roots. And what did you say? You said if people want to go there, don't oh, hesitate, right. right? Because if you can, of course, a COVID yeah, we yeah. cannot. But uh, let's assume if, it's going to end someday. Yes. In the time you want to visit <laughs> uh, the ancient, uh, the T horse road, mm. uh, ASAP. That's what we wanted to do too. Is mm. it's uh, losing because uh, we are improving. So the mm. older roads are not maintained, and when it's not maintained, uh, it's just gonna be. It's gonna go back to nature. Yeah. Yes, that, and that it place. won't be on the map mm -hmm. because we don't. Use much of a paper map now, mm -hmm. and they're updating. They probably won't mm -hmm. update those old roads, yep. and uh, there are not many people there. So it could be walking or or drive. Not probably not even be able to drive on those roads anymore. Right. right? You have a like a, now we have tunnels, so we won't be a uh, uh, swirling. The, right. The, the spectacular views will be yeah. will be yielding to tunnels. Yes. Um, Yeah. No, it's just basically it's just like no maintenance, and yeah. so those were it's, just not gonna yeah. exist for long. It's not like uh, other places where you know you've got the I ninety five, but you still could take US one, right? If you live on the Eastern Seaboard, for example. Um, and but at least uh, those are proper roads because that's what I mean. And there's enough people that the US one's not going anywhere. Mm. But here, there's there's a, not enough people. It's mm -hmm. super expensive just to maintain the one road. They the cannot, condition they is cannot. really hard. Even yeah. in modern like uh, highways and roads, yeah. there are still like a two lane total and with lots of falls. On the way out of Tibet, mm. we could see the cars down the valley mm. on the, scary yeah it's still very like dangerous the cars road. that went off the cliff and so, then you see the little bottom side the shiny side's not up anymore yeah not good not good yeah. and a good thing to know um point out here is like a though in english we call that the t horse road mm. it's actually a network Of roads, yes, different which routes. they're kind of getting at here. How even these three routes are mm. highly interconnected in a funky way, making them a really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We call it the T horse road, but yeah, there's, it's the T horse trade network. It would be better, but that's not as uh, sexy, is it? <laughs> All right, uh, I keep highlighting when I'm not there, so I go back to the book. So I was just saying, down here is where they say like how the roads are all interconnected. So mm. T road. Network. So we're going to move on to fermented, fermented puar tea cake, aka shu puar. Oops. Here I am. <laughs> Just want to be out of the way as much as possible. Fermented puar cake. Okay. Brewing difficulty. Easy to learn. Difficulty four stars. Better, best tasting season, winter. Hmm, interesting. The function of puar have been increasingly recognized. For men, keep health. For women, lose weight. For seniors, lengthen their lives. For children, promote appetite. Some scientists have said that tea is nice because it keeps the original ecosystem, its green, healthy, organic features to meet the needs of modern people to pursue health. I'm going to just unpack that. Before I scroll down, I think I want to just before you dive into I little dive things. In. I think uh, this whole paragraph is very rhetorical in uh, a Chinese written rhetorical. So it talk about for men, for women, for mm. old. It's a way. It's a written way to say yes. for ev those function. It's not just only for women to lose weight. That's right. Or only for men. If to you're help. following along, you'll see we kind of stripped that out because it was just a little bit. It's kind of confusing. You think, oh, it doesn't help men lose weight. What's so special about it? No, right. no, no. It's just, it's just a, a more point out. So woman, man, old or young, you can all drink and benefit mm. from drink shu pu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you'll notice we did we did take out that sort of very specific reference in yeah. the uh, finished translation yeah. because you know for people for grown-ups 
it'll promote your appetite. That's why we had a little something yes. to eat before we start drinking shampoo. Right. I just feel like a, 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 you don't write or talk in that in English as much. That's right. But when we see the Chinese one, we understand what's going on. Yes. Yeah. So I just uh, it could have been confusing. I think he did the right, right thing. And. Uh, Later on, talk about the ecosystem, talk about the healthy organic grain and all that. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's the translation isn't quite close to what it says. All that saying, the whole paragraph is saying it's very good for the modern people's health. Mm. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. Again, if you're following along. Um, I think that you'll see that that's kind of how we translate it. And other than that, like it's still, even though it is a little chunky, I didn't have much else to say about it. I, it was well done. I mean, it's just it's healthy tea. Um, ecosystem is kind of the probiotic aspect, and blah. No, it's all it's all there. I think. Mm -hmm. So let's motor on to the deep fragrance and good taste. There are 54 kinds of fragrances which are through piling, drying, and storing to increase the variety of ingredients. These ingredients have a close relationship with temperature and humidity, enzyme and microorganisms. Fermentation. The microbes release heat and metabolites which play an important role in degradation of catechin, sugar, amino acid, and transformation of fragrance. After piling tea, catechins and bitter tastes substantially reduce. This is the reason why many people love the fermented tea. The tea has deep fragrance and good taste. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. So, first in the title, you mean a deep fragrance means the aged flavor, the aged fragrance. Mm. Again, the word fragrance is exactly the tripping point I was going to highlight to begin with. Because again, we start with these 54 fragrances. Right. And that really brings us in English to the nose. Uh -huh. But like you said, this is something beyond. And I guess it with... This with, is more of a, a, a talking about compound or like mm. a, a aroma chemical. Mm. Aroma chemical? Aromatics, Aromatic, yeah. uh, Aromatic compounds. Compounds. So this is getting into a bit of the tea chemistry, which is why I think the sort of the translation slides a bit here because it's getting pretty technical again, right? right? So, um, so that was my question. 54 fragrances, are those volatiles or aroma compounds? Is that what they're talking about? Because the number's so specific, right? It sounds pretty sciencey. So it, and then, um, and then when I read piling and drying and storing to increase the variety of ingredients, I realized, okay, they're talking about the stuff that's happening during the fermentation slash oxidation phase, right? That's right. Um, oh, sorry, here, temperature and humidity, mm -hmm. uh, the enzymes, the micro... So this is what's going on when we do, when we do the... when we make fermented or shu puar, mm -hmm. ripened puar. Um, and then what else? Yeah, and I don't, I'm not, I don't want to, not that I don't want to, I don't have the, the scientific knowledge to really get into exactly what's happening here, but they're kind of giving you a hint, right? Mm -hmm. When you pile the tea, the catechins, uh, which I think are resulting, of a, are the cause for the bitter taste, they go down and the tea gets really lovely and mellow. Yes. And if you've ever had shupuar, you know exactly what they're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Um it's it got doesn't that. have like the green tea or no, none any... of the bite that you get out of a shampoo yes. or a green tea or even a greener oolong if you overbrew yes. it or if it's not a great one. Yes. Uh, it's mellow. It's like mm. leathery, woody, wet earth, like so mm. silky in the mouth. Yes. You know? Yes. And sugar also have like there are lots of uh, mm. transformations mm. Uh, in terms of the uh, chemical level in the oh, tea yeah. leaves. And um, that's one of the reasons uh, it gets pretty popular among people because, uh, mm. uh, you know, modern lifestyle, lots of eating out, lots of uh, heavy yeah. stuff. And this kind of having a uh, shupar is almost like a, a yogurt of tea kind of a concept. Right, right. So it's quite good. And, and if you're a taster, it provides you with something truly, sh like shockingly new. If you're into yeah. um, a dynamic tasting profile, that you know something that will really. Sh First of all, tea is already un unbelievable that all these different varieties, the six categories, all come from the same leaf. 
Uh, but I think Shupuar is one of the real shockers that really knock your socks off mm. or those heavy fermented teas. Anyway, so that's that paragraph. I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And later on in Dr. TQ&A, we're, we're going to talk about uh, Robber and Shupuar. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to wrap up these two paragraphs yeah. real quick because these are really short and I don't think there was any major, major, oh, maybe there was something funny. Let's read and see if there was something funny. <laughs> Appreciation always before drinking. Features of dry tea, maroon or dark chestnut, which is called pig liver color. Oh, I knew there was something fun. Pig liver color, the Chinese food color reference and it's pig liver. So anyway, but you, if you've seen the liquor, yeah, this is fine, right? This is fine. It's that beautiful ruby. Maybe we would prefer to say ruby than pig liver. <laughs> it's right. It's a, just a, those are no way of describing tea, like a longji is a brown rice color. Right. You know, the, in it's Chinese, it's yeah, right. so this is a zhu gan hong. It's a no, like almost mm. like a tea term for this tea. Zhu gan yeah. hong. Yeah, that's why mm. it's a quoted here. Nice, nice. And then enjoy while tasting. The soup is dark red and clear and smells wonderful. Very true. Smooth, good aftertaste, no odor. Yeah, wonderful. So I love it. There's, there's, that's just, I put, my comment was yes. That's all I said <laughs> about that. Bang on. Yes, no odor. Here points out uh, also in uh, no moldy flavor. <laughs> oh, which we Very did capture important. in the original and that's yes. super, super important. There's so many times where you'll, have a an aged chupuar or something and uh the the dominating flavor is uh well moldy i don't know how else to describe it like uh it just you'll know it if you taste it and uh, it's not it's not good that's not a sign of a good aged puar that's nasty that's what we said <laughs> nasty all right dr t q and a lab coat glasses all right, how does the unfermented tea become fermented tea? Fermented tea is through piling to dry up the tea leaves in the warehouse. Strain with a certain amount of water will accelerate the aging process of transformation. The process can quickly change the potent nature of tea and soften the taste. After this process, the tea can be immediately consumed. Mm. All right, what did I say about this? Where's my Dr. T notes? First, the sentence is, oh, we switch to the tea table. Oh, sorry. How I, do you know I'm going to brew? Yeah, I was, I was hoping to use the camera a bit more anyway. So right. it was a beautiful turn of events. Mm, let me do this. We're going to unpack this in a minute after we brew a bit of tea. Right. Mm. Actually, let's talk about the tea. I just realized a mm. uh, uh, while ago we got asked uh, for ta uh, asked us to introduce our puar. What's the story behind your puar tea? Then I was like, uh, you know, my personality is somebody who is not overly obsessed with story when I drink tea. Is I love to know the story, but that's not what I look for tea right. or stuff. But I understand that for many people, when mm -hmm. they are getting into tea, story is a way. Then I realized, yeah. yes, why I, I should have tell more about our tea stories. Because our tea will have stories. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, a few things I was thinking is, uh, first, uh, do um, many teas, you will see award-winning tea and stuff. So good news there, if you purchase our tea, almost all of them are award-winning teas. It's just that they're all award-winning. I never put that up. And there are right. so many awards. I feel like, uh, you know, at it doesn't certain, mean much to me. So I just didn't yeah. put it up. Yeah. But um, at a know. certain point, it just gets to be like a repetitive and annoying marketing. Thing, yeah, yeah. Right. That's an awful spot for you. So, to pour, so. Uh, yes. <laughs> Almost like all of our teas are award-winning teas. If you like that, we should put a little badge oh, or something. On. One more thing. Um, and uh, pour. Our pour, you would notice, um, except the supreme tea that has very specific, it's a single origin, not only single origin, but also single tree. 
the rest are all uh, more of a mix. Uh, all the origin when people ask, oh, this is from uh, Bingdao, this is from Yiwu or stuff. I was like, this is from uh, Monghai area. So the story behind our tea, if you buy the cakes or stuff, you notice it all uh, come from one uh, factory that we work with. And the owner is the gentleman, Mr. Wei, who used to be the vice president of Yunnan Importing and Exporting mm. Tea Company. So uh, exceptional position in tea. Um, after he retired, he started this um, company producing tea, and uh, we like my mom has been. Uh, uh, my mom has known know him for over twenty years. They have been the good thing. Like I think when we select tea and select people to work with, we care about their. Uh, uh, the how should I say uh, ethic ethic right in tea right poor because when I mentioned right. their that integrity, uh, or their integrity ethic, in tea like, that's what we care credibility like that combination of all those things and the understanding of tea is very important mm -hmm. because poor is a uh, heated it's a very heated with a huge money we're talking mm. about. And sometimes in uh, some customers here in North America, when they know that uh, our producer was uh, used to be the vice president of importing exporting um, company, they were like, oh my God, he must be super rich, right? He has the primary resources to all those best materials and stuff, but he is not super rich. He is just a normal guy running the business because we all agree on something because even though those some certain regions and teas are nice are really good it's the market price is overrated with tons mm. of uh, uh, fakes are floating in the market for my mom for for mr way they've tasted uh, the top-notch teas that's right not many people have access to really. mm. they know and uh, they feel like that that is good, and that's why one of our business in China is commission based, uh, uh, rare teas, rare poor aged right. teas, and stuff like that. But those are for really small portion of people. Right. But to collectors, make tea, this is a that's a collector a, a different thing, level right? in tea but tasting the, slash collecting. Right, but we're more dedicated to give have really drinkable, really good tea right. to uh, tasting grade. That's what we mean when grade, we say tasting know, grade tea. Like us, like normal people who are not going to spend 50000 on right. a cake or mm -hmm. a, even 200000 for a cake, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and the real technical part about Shenpua is blending. It's not making. Believe me, if you go to Yunnan and stuff, you can make puar. Puar mm. is very simple. Actually, that's so funny, right? How they make puar is, it's, yeah, it's dead. You look at how they make oolong, right? We tried to do a little handmade oolong. It's yes. impossible. Okay, on your first try, you will make garbage. Guaranteed. I don't care mm. how good you are. It's yes. hard. Puar, slap it, throw it in the sun. Yes, puar <laughs> is very simple to make. The hard part with the shen puar is blending. Mm. The good ones, like they can blend, take, like talk about uh, yi wu, uh, right? Very mellow, very beautiful. Mm. Banjang, powerful. That is great for age. But if you put those in one cake, that because every region has its character, mm. and it also means its lack of certain other elements. If you can make a beautiful blend that give it a tropical, uh, that wild jungle right. flavor, while it's very powerful, but also subtle right. and smooth to drink, that's a better in terms of tasting. That's a better level rather than just simply pursue. This is it's like painting, like making a painting. If you just paint the canvas red, it's pretty boring. Right. It's right. when you put those things together in a wonderful yes, way that, that they start to work in your mouth and have elements of the one plus not overpowering the other element, but working with it. Right. Right. So that's the tricky part. And for shupwar, it is actually the fermenting part. Mm. You know, no matter how good the material is, if you didn't ferment it well, it's just not going to turn out good. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what Mr. Wei has been working on. His factory's focus is not uh, like oh, finding the best uh, uh, 
uh, origin the heat it in the market and sell that for super price, super expensive price. Correct me if I'm price. wrong. He has to. He could sell it for an expensive price, but he also has to buy the leaf for an expensive price, right? Yes. And he has to be vigilant because yeah. that leaf is getting. But there、mm. is a difference. If anything under his name it sells. Because of his position, he his had、mm. old times. He had all the access to the best qualities all over Yunnan. He knows where it is tasty. Like he could really know. Right. And second, he is always invited to all kinds of poor activities and、mm. stuff. He is a respected figure in that. But he still. He's、uh, next on my visit list. Right. He still <laughs> insists. We have that mango tree in the factory. That Yunnan is a really good place. You, my mom was there eating a mango, throw the pit on the ground. Three years later, when we visit, it was a full tree and it was making mango fruit. <laughs> right?、That's、Isn't、amazing. that lucky? Yeah, that's a. It's a really lush rainforest environment.、Uh, beautiful. Right.、Um, so back to him. I just、it. want to mention that.、Um, so lots of our teas, the region is that, but when you taste it, it's a really smooth. It might not. Cater the the trendiness of、right. oh mine is from uh you know Bingdao mine is from Guafengzhai mine is、mm-hmm. it's not like that but I guarantee if you side by side our tea vis a vis all those you taste you will realize ours tastes better. Nice, nice. So I、uh, on my last tea trip I listed out a bunch of people I wanted to visit, and、uh, this is how、uh, for those of you who also don't like. I want to back up and explain. Like Mr. Wei is the is our dark tea guy, let's say, and the way Jen describe him, I haven't met him yet, but the way she describe him, he's like, he's the Mr. Sue of dark tea. Yeah. Right.、He's、Their the, generation, they tasted the real thing. Yeah. I remember. Is he the one who had the、uh, the the one of those pinnacle areas? I think it was Banjang or something. Oh and yeah. He, and he comment his comment. Everybody's、yes. freaking out about this sip of tea. She told me a story, so I'm、yes. secondhand telling it. And he sip it and says,、mm, "This banjang tea has no power anymore." No,、mm. no, no. Something like that. No, it was in、uh, first. It was because、uh, their factory has really, really great fermenting, like a piling, like a shupur techniques.、Mm. So、uh, there are some、uh, the merchant, the tea merchant. They bought the uh, uh, banjang, lao、uh, banjang, the, or the really expensive material. Tea、right. wanted to make into shupur, so the previous year they made the tea taste like、uh, socks. Yes, just a, a total wreck, and that's we're talking about million dollars investment. Totally cannot sell to get、mm. the cost back. Right. And so this year they have been looking everywhere for doing the a、uh, doing the shupur again and visited.、Uh, Mr. Wei, and、uh, of course, bring us, and we happen to be there, and、uh, bring a lot of、uh, his sample for everybody to taste, which is、uh, the real old、uh, banjang. Usually,、uh, in the spring, a year for a kilo is over,、uh, like、mm-hmm. a basic basic cost is over a、uh, hundred thousand. A kilo. That's the real lao banjang price for、know? the raw leaf. Raw leaf. Wow. Yeah, and sometimes you don't guarantee the real one. Anyway, complicated. Just、uh, when he had a sip of that、uh, lao banjang, and he talked to my mom. It's not any of the rest.、Uh, talk to my mom because they they are that、uh, elder elder group of、right. tea that seen pre you know the, the decades. The yeah, old guard. Yes, and he just said, "Do you see any point of drinking this tea?" And he just walked away. So I was like, "Huh? What does that mean?" And everybody was like, "Don't really understand." But later on, my mom explained, and and I realized that my mom has always been saying, "Why we don't do those, especially those super、uh, big names like Banjiang, like Bingdao. Those are marketing really heated ones. We don't do it because once it gets so much fame, right? People overpluck、mm. and everything. Not to mention there's the fake ones." In China,、mm. there are story that people、uh, waiting for the farmer to pluck underneath the tree, like watching them pluck, and still got material swapped. Wow. Yeah. So not to mention those, just the real ones are not as good as old times because the whole cycle has speed right, up. Right. It's too it's aggressive. Like right. You gotta let sweatshop. You know, two, two, two tree kind of concept. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Anyway, little stories. We yeah, have no, so much really stories. fun stuff. I gotta... Really fun stuff, and it's good to share those. I think. Uh, let us know if you like those stories. Yeah. I saw the JS. Do you Let's understand do my story? I I feel like maybe I don't like to tell story because in English. No, I, I think you did a great my, job. My, uh, and my uh, time form is really bad when I turn. No, tell I think story. you did a great job. Let's <laughs> check. I, JS was like freaking out about the two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars for a cake. Says what kind AST. of what kind of cake is that? So yeah, an, those an are old usually one. HT. Like mm. uh, that's the market price. If you wanna get, you know, like a sixties and seventies or even older ones, <laughs> and not very old, of course, because the uh, like the Bai Song Ping in nineties, in late nineties, has uh, the auction of over a million. So, talk about now the price. So that's are just uh, uh, and the twenty two hundred thousand. Sometimes don't even guarantee a real one. That's why we. Uh, Help in China will help people at least,、uh, you know. Though you spend a good money, at least you have somebody to there to verify you are getting a real tea. You know what's worse than spending money is getting a fake one that just the worst two hundred. Right. Or not right. even. So just catching up on a few of the comments.、Um, uh, Back, I think we're way back when、uh, <coughs> Cindy commented that she just got some rogoi from them. I think she means us. Us, so, probably.、Sure. As well, I really enjoyed it a couple of days ago.、Um, that's great, tasty. And Josh、mm. popped in, and said he will come back and watch later when it's uploaded. I think he's just popped in、uh, while he's at work or something. I think he's <laughs> a little, little YouTube hooky there. And then、um, Cindy, I remember that pop up when we talk about the horse the falling and the gorge, right? Yeah, that is、yeah. super crazy. Yeah. And、um, JS says it's so interesting how the journey affects the tea so much, and、yeah. it is. And it's it, you know what I, I sometimes now I get a little bit sad because I realize no matter what we do with Shempuar, you know people like to obsess about how they're going to age it and they're going to get a pumador and do this and that, and that's all cool if that's your jazz, if that's your jam, go for it.、Uh, be careful,、mm-hmm. don't wreck your tea. Um, like I always like the simple way, right? You put it in a cool, dark place and you let it age. Ideally, in your climate, because、uh, the fun thing about that is you can end up, you know, let's say your buddy in Florida has a, the same cake that you got, and you live in Ottawa. In twenty years, you're going to have two very different teas. I think that would be such a fun experiment to play.、Mm. I gotta cue somebody up and play that game.、Um, <laughs> but anyway, I don't think you need to go crazy about aging it. But when I was thinking about that, ah,、oh, maybe that... we can do that. Everybody put a will do a, like a grand、uh, pour tasting. Any tea they could change, and we set a date. Oh, we should totally do that. Five years later but, and but, taste again. But I want、like、the thing that makes me sad is that that tea that traveled on that road, you'll、mm-hmm. will never taste that. Yes, that would be some like that would be its own、mm. whole unique thing.、Right? Yes, and I just want to and the, you. Reminds me to mention that the shenpuar, the fresh out of the factory shenpuar we taste、oh, today,、right. doesn't taste like how they were fresh out of the factory twenty, thirty years ago,、mm. or even ten years ago,、mm. because the tea, the the because, method, they are improving、yeah. how to make a shenpuar. There's、yeah. more rolling, make them more drinkable. They know、stuff. it's going to get consumed、they、because all times it was it. really bad, undrinkable. Yeah, Now, rip, rip your face right off.、Mm. <laughs> Now it's better. So also that could have further effect on、uh, you know aging and stuff. Right. So yeah,、um, but that's why I say it's kind of something that's lost in time now. Yeah.、Really. Yeah.、Um, so then,、um, right, the journey and JS, thank you. Says our teas are so delicious. Also, the cups are adorable. Thanks. I love、oh, this. This is、you. my favorite. Oh, I got to go to the tea t- the tea camera. I'm going to try and get a close up of the. Right, see the、yeah. little writing on the cup. Really pretty cup. This is my favorite. Those are those writing are all one character, different writing. Oh, it's all one tell? character. One character, Fu. Fu. Yeah. No, Buddha. Uh, no, like a、uh, luck, but a good、mm. luck, a good fortune, good stuff. Show your cup. Yeah, this one is made by my mom's friend. He has a little、uh, kiln. Outside the、uh, Beijing, that the lighting's a bit harsh on this one because、yeah. it's got a stronger glaze. But、right. there you go. And this one is like、uh, those uh, wood, wood fired. Right. So, so it would have、uh, ash naturally fallen and have different、yeah. colors. 
So, and um, where else? Uh, ah. JS says, um, I got, it's a really interesting story. Oh, I think he got it. I think when you were saying that you were, okay. weren't sure if people are understanding you, I think you're very understandable. He got it. It's a really interesting story. It really shows a different perspective. Yeah, I think it's an mm -hmm. important perspective. And if you, if you can, this isn't related, but all the tea people that, on the last couple of tea trips I went on, I realized Jian Li has this network of friends, really. It's not like, like yes, they're business partners or business mm. associates, but they're really friends. They're really people who love tea. Mr. Ding, Mr. Yeah. Su, Mr. Wei, right? And Mr. They, Su is the in Sichuan, right? Yes. Mr. Mr. Ding is, uh, I'm not, Anhui area? Yellow tea, yes. he's a yellow tea, yes. Taiping he's Hongkui. From, uh, he's a guru. Uh, the yeah. guy's a guru of tea making, like just, yeah. anyway, just... Those are they all met in the 90s when my mom just get into tea and at mm. that time tea, tasting tea where tea is not a big business like if you want to talking about tasting great tea it's just get started right china's market just get open it's the very starting mm. point when a bunch of tea people are trying to do something and uh, mm -hmm. promote a little bit more than uh, everyday jasmine tea kind of thing so they have uh, that a special bound at certain times yes you yes. know they are in their own region working and stuff all times they have different conference every now and then meet together but they all and people at that time are really uh more simple you know mm. less of a marketing yes, yes, driven yes it's not like a bad uh, you uh you go to the tea business and do that as right. a business it's nothing wrong with that's it right. yeah. but they are just not that group yet because yeah. at that time that's not how you make money you don't right, go there right. to make money so um and johnny says he likes mm. the stories too and he'd love to hear more mm. and uh, js says it's mind-blowing i guess i know what i would do if i ever won the lottery <laughs> <laughs> you don't need, you don't need to spend all that money just uh just give us a ring we'll hook you up with the real thing if you win the lottery or if you don't i wanted to say something though about mm. that because mm. when you were talking about the the ethic of Mr. Wei and how he's really just looking to make a great cup of tea. That is exactly like that is our shared ethic. That's what we do, right? Whether it's the uh, our simple accessible teas, the taste yeah. is still going to deliver yeah. on point what it's supposed to. So yeah, like compare this tea with vis a vis Yiwu taste. How many people are saying, "Oh, we love Yiwu because it's so soft, just so so beautiful and stuff." This tea has it. Mm. right it's, yeah soft and round and uh, silky <laughs> you don't necessarily have to really location based mm. because it's a good marketing tea but it doesn't mean other ones are not as good or anything yeah all right do we no we gotta talk about this dr t right yes heading the back first guys. sentence is wrong i haven't waited for this Okay, the first sentence, is sound, uh, at least to me, it sounds like fermented tea. Right. The piling is to dry it up, kind yeah. of in it, right? What do we but say about not. that? No. <laughs> okay, the piling isn't to dry it at mm -hmm. all. Um, so that confused me uh, as well. Um, and then, they, and then, because they said the piling through piling to dry up the tea. No, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And then they say strain with a certain amount of water. I don't know what they, I feel like they mean like the tea is a strainer and they pour water over it and the water filters through. I don't know what they mean here. It's mm, I too, think uh, it doesn't matter what it means in right, English. Right, Let's just, just talk about, about how did the raw pour, uh, shen pour become shu pour. Basically, shen pour yeah. when it's done, right? It's loose leaf before it's uh, pressed into cake. We right. call that mao cha. Mm. And uh, there's two ways. You press that into a cake that's a more finished shen pour. But when it's malta, it's still shen pu. It's mm -hmm. just a, mm -hmm. didn't press yet. That's the only difference. Then when you want to make a shu pu, you use those malta, which is loose leaf shen pu. Mm -hmm. You have a big quantity of them, and you spray uh, some water. You know, it's like a composting, literally, like how mm -hmm. we do composting at home. Right. Uh, you want to heat, uh, control heat, control humidity, mm -hmm. and time. And, and that's to where, let it ferment. Yeah. And in one of your stories a while ago, you were talking about the technical, how difficult that is. 
Mm -hmm. And as as sort of just getting started gardeners, mm -hmm. last couple of years we've been gardening, so we have been composting. And um, well, first I can't imagine drinking my compost, but it's right. really like you still even with that what we do, which is we don't really worry too much because it's just gonna go. It just needs to go into our garden. It just mm -hmm. needs to go into a dirt. But imagine you got to control that humidity and that temperature so that it mm -hmm. tastes just right. Yes. That's why, it, you know, you talk about the Bingdao material that got wrecked by the first guy. Because if you yes. mess up that step, it's very easy to end up with mush. You could end up with mush. You could end up with the wrong, just the wrong stuff. Yes, so very, absolutely. very technical The technical procedure. part of a uh, shu puar is the uh, fermenting one. Mm -hmm. If you don't do, uh, the, if the producer couldn't do that right, it could wreck everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, you sometimes you see some uh, shu puar brew up and uh, the whole liquor is dull and it looks like a soy sauce. <laughs> soy sauce, yes. We... Now it's less of those. Uh, a couple of years ago or something, it's still pretty popular because it's just hard to do and it end up like that and the tea material is wrecked. It's drinkable if you just want to drink something. Mm. But there's no tasting element to it. Mm. And uh, also, like, um, on the other hand, say this, how should I say that? I mean, the shupur, throughout the process, the producer has to taste it to know when is the perfect time to right. stop. Right. So uh, during the fermentation, it's actually really bad. And at that time, there's a lot of uh, bacterial, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. microbial activity. It's kind of like tasting a bread dough before, while well, it's rising. Yeah, it's, a, so it's really like a tart acid and mm. really unpleasant. And at that time, you could have, you know, some bad bacteria taking an event, taking, I mean, winning at the moment, then eventually, right. eventually, when it's settled, the whole taste is smooth out, the whole, uh, uh, the whole micro balance right. regained, kind of. And uh, just want to point out, in China, the, the government, uh, the, the, like, here, the food, FDA in America. FDA in America. Uh, House, Canada. CFIA yeah. here in Canada. The same with China, they will go to factories and uh, inspect, san inspect sample. and mm. those, yes, because uh, when doing uh, tea, there could be different, right. uh, you know, bad bacteria infections. Yeah, there's the more pile. risk there's a with quality, that tea than with, yeah. Yeah, there is a quality check too. It's not like some people were saying like, oh, tea never goes bad or stuff like that. Tea could get really bad mm, yeah. if it's not done properly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. So that is how tea piling works in a really big nutshell. Just basically to say that it's like composting, but super complicated. Right. Yes. If anything I didn't explain well or... Uh, yeah. explain too much that you feel dizzy let me know yeah I shoot up a comment and yes. ask for more information yes, or less information that's a good point yes because sometimes because i know and uh, if i didn't organize my word too much i could be skipping certain elements that uh, yeah. you or yeah. you didn't know so i can feel that yeah Just don't be shy shoot it up into the chat mm -hmm. shoot it down in the comments below i think you're doing a great job though because king kong just joined himself um, and he says it's his first time here and it's really interesting. So thanks for that generous Thank comment, you. King Kong 11235. Um, and we're glad that you enjoy it. We love doing this. We love sharing mm. tea knowledge with you guys, tea information. Cindy has a question. Let's see what it is. I never thought about how hard the fermentation step is to get right. Yeah, I know what you mean. I hadn't either until we talked about it a few years ago. But mm. comparing it to compost makes that understandable. As sometimes my compost gets moldy and sometimes it's too dry. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're a gardener, you know exactly. And you've really put some time into trying to get your compost quickly and efficiently and not in a way that's full of flies mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. to get it to make some really nice rich earth. Yeah, you know it can dry out. It can get too moist. It can get moldy. Exactly what Cindy said. Exactly. It can get super stinky. It can um. It can lose its. <laughs> you can see how many mistakes we made. Oh, tons! It can lose its heat. Even it just right. It just goes inert, and you're like, but it's not done. What's the going difference? On? Is uh, compost? We can actually find some because we're not drinking or right. eating it or for some special we, yeah, you taste. You can brute force it. 
you can brute yes, force it. Yes,、mm. right. So there is a quote unquote fix、mm. to help it, but、yeah. with the poor, like a, a piling poor, it becomes you get one, once you pass it, it you, you, you get one、it. shot at it. Yes, That's right. If it's、mm-hmm. over, it's over because all the material is settled the moment that tea. Leaves got plucked. Yeah, and、right? I hope I hope I'm glad it gave you some insights, Cindy. <clears throat> and I think I don't know. It's a bit weird, for, but I think for <clears throat> us tea nerds, it's not weird at all. We think I think when you sit down and sip, now that you know this, when you, next time you sip a chupoir, you can reflect on that, and maybe you'll taste something different because you kind of know a bit more where it comes from. You might know more what to look for, or even if you just can appreciate, wow, this guy just knocked this one out of the park. Really good. You know,、um, I think that does enhance all of our experience、uh, when we sit. I hope. Yeah, that's、absolutely. my hope. All right. So,、um, I wonder if I have anything else. No, nope, that's about it.、Mm-hmm. So we've we've、uh, wrapped up the、uh, tea book for this week. That was Shen and Shupuar. Coming up next week, guys. I will throw the book up just to kind of give you a teaser look. We're going to talk about our last section in dark tea: boiling and drinking old paka. So、uh, come on back next week for that.、Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to.、Um, I I can't believe how much I love this session. I really get amped for this Sunday tea book. I think because it just resonates with our mission at Gen T, like to bring you guys. We want to bring you guys tasting great tea. We do that through our website. We have the teas there; they're there.、Mm-hmm. But all of the stuff I've learned, I think it's because I've learned so much, and it's just really fun to share it with you guys. I hope、right. I hope it is working. I hope you enjoy it.、Mm-hmm. Um, we've got some more cool stuff coming up this week. We've been adding to our live schedule. Check out our website. I,、uh, the link is up、yes. on our website somewhere. We're going to make that very public soon, so it's easier to find. Maybe down in the description. Yeah,、oh. we have the live schedule published on our website.、Mm-hmm. And, We've、um, got the Yingxing teapot thing coming up. I think the twenty fourth of November, but check the schedule to be sure. Yeah. We've got stress relief coming up later this week.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunday tea book next week, and we're starting to do.、Um, we're getting back into just kind of impromptu lives, so we might just pop up, boom, like that, and have a tea just to kind of hang out. Because I love these sessions. Yeah. But I also love to just sit down and talk about how's the weather where you are and stuff like that too. Yeah, so, yeah,、um, absolutely. And、uh, we will have more brewing video come up because that's a big section of the book that we skip because it's image by image. I think since we are having a video channel here,、mm. it's great that if we make that、uh, into videos. So stay tuned for those. Yes. All right, guys. And、um, so that's what's coming up on our live schedule. If you're new to the channel, I think there was a couple folks who wandered in. Hopefully, you're still out there. Please click the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up on this video if you like the content.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, if you want to know when we go live, click the notification bell so that you will know when we go live and when we post new videos, vlogs, how to brew, all kinds of stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. Guys, have a great rest of your weekend. JS says thank you all for doing these streams. He enjoys being able to watch and learn so much. We love doing、awesome. it, Cindy. I saw your message. You're out in, in an internet desert with your mom. You have a great time <laughs> with your time. mom. Yeah, and maybe take some tea and enjoy some tea with your mom. You can always catch up on these later, guys.、Mm-hmm. They're not going anywhere. But it is super fun to have you here with us. We truly appreciate it. And until next time, you're a super host. <laughs> and until next time, keep keep steeping. steeping.